Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the Do So Knits podcast. My name is Kristen. I am a knitter, graphic designer, and military spouse living in Germany with my husband Shane, our dog Sherlock, and our cat Ebony. Coming at you from a slightly different venue today, I am outside on my porch because it's actually kind of nice outside. Um, the past weeks have been quite warm. Um, upper 90s and today it's only supposed to get up to the upper 80s so I figured I'd sit outside while it's still in the morning and still a little bit nice out and just enjoy the nice breeze while I have one so yes sitting outside I hope everything looks okay I tested the mic and everything should be fine so I have had quite a morning where I've wanted to record I try to get everything set up and so then it's like okay before I record I'm going to go walk Sherlock so that way he's good and then it was as it's nice in the shade but then after a walk it's kind of uh, a little glistening um, so I went inside gathered all the things wrote my show notes try to get everything together should have done it last night but that's fine we're here now and then by the time I get everything ready and together the laundry is done so I needed to go hang up the laundry because I'm definitely not drying it inside because I need the house to stay cool so then I go hang up the laundry and now I'm a little little warm and toasty and sweaty again but I'm gonna record this today so here we are so if you don't know do so knits is my knitting podcast where I share with you guys everything that's been going on in my little knitting corner of the universe I'm glad you guys are joining me today I hope you are having a good weekend or week whenever you are watching this. So if you're ready to get started, grab a nice drink, get cozy, maybe grab your knitting and we can get started. I'm drinking today from my crazy sock lady mug, so it's brand new. I'm drinking iced tea. There is nothing warm in here. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. So this week I only have one finished object for you. You might be able to guess what it is, but it is my City Limits sweater by Tannis La Lavalie. I knit this for my husband Shane. So it is knit out of, I'll hold it up for you. This is knit out of Cascade Heathers 220, the non-superwash in the purple jewel heather colorway. I knit it on my Lana Grossa interchangeable needles, which are the same as the Knit Pro Symphonies. It's just a slightly different coloring on them. And then I knit the 40 inch size for Shane. He has a 40 and a half inch chest circumference, so it's slightly smaller than it. I think when I blocked it, it might be exactly 40 and a half inches. But yeah, it is done. My goal was to finish this before he left for work, which he left last week. So I was able to make sure it fit and got it all ready for him. He didn't take it with him right away. Um, I'm gonna mail him a package once it gets a little colder. It's a little, it's too warm to wear a wool sweater right now. So I'm very happy with this sweater. It is the first sweater I've knit for him, but I think it worked out pretty well. I wanted to knit a simple raglan sweater just to get his measurements and everything um, before doing a more complex one. So overall, I follow the pattern pretty well. What's really nice about this pattern is it is written for a multitude of sizes. It starts at a zero to six month to, and goes up to an eight to 10 year old size. And then for adults, it goes from a 33 to a 68 and a half inch bust. So you get a lot of, you get a lot of wiggle room in this pattern, so. It's very nice. I added an extra length to the body, so it's 18 inches from the underarm. I did the three inches of ribbing at the bottom. And then one modification I made was, I kept this pearl detail going all the way down through the ribbing. Oh, and something I forgot to mention at the beginning, all the show notes for this episode are on my website, dosonits.com. 
There you can find all the patterns, all the yarns, all the needles I use, has all the designers, and nice close-up pictures of what I have. So that way, if you want to go back and look at things in more detail, it's all up there. So, so I kept that ribbing going down the bottom. And then the other modification I made on the sleeves, I followed the decreases as is, and then I just did a slight rapid decrease before the cuff just to make it a little smaller. And then I did the two inches of ribbing on the cuff with the tubular bind off. I think it looks really nice. And then the biggest modification I made was in the collar. I added, I don't know how well you can see it right there, I added, some short rows on the collar because it was really wide it was kind of like a boat neck and for him i know he wasn't gonna wear it so when i had him try it on i knit about an inch of the collar and then i added i started from the front of the right shoulder and then went all the way to the front of the left and then did a short row coming back there and back and did around to resolve all those short rows so I added an extra four rows to the back, um, but it just brought in the sides of the collar so it would fit him a little bit better. And that was the biggest modification that I made. But yeah, overall, I'll post a, a picture on the screen of him wearing it because I made him take photos of it before he left. That way I would have a good model and that will show everything how it fits on him. I think it looks really, really nice. When he was trying it on, he was like, this is really hot. And I was like, yes, but it is summer right now. And imagine being out, walking around, because we travel in the winter. Imagine being out, traveling in the winter when we're walking around and you'll feel so warm and it'll be so nice. So I think he's pretty happy. I loved knitting this up. The yarn was really nice and squishy. It's really warm it doesn't split as you're knitting it i highly recommend it and i liked the non-superwash feel it's a little cheaper than the superwash and as long as you don't uh wash it in hot water you should be good to go um so i really like it there's a nice depth of color overall i'm very excited for this and i'll definitely be knitting him another sweater but i probably should knit myself one first because i haven't done that in a while that is the only finished object I have for you guys this week. I do have a couple of works in progress. My knitting mojo has been a little off in the past couple weeks. Shane left last week for work and so I normally would have recorded last weekend because um, I'm trying to record every two weeks but it's just not feeling up to it last weekend. I wanted to just stay home relax trying to get into this new routine as we're figuring out my morning routine coming home walking the dog when I'm cooking dinner all those kind of things so by the time I come home from work walk the dog cook dinner eat walk the dog again I'm typically a little tired um, and since it's been so hot I've definitely not wanted to knit a whole lot but this past week it has cooled down a lot this weekend so I've been wanting to knit a couple more things and I'm excited to share with you what I've started on. The first thing that I've started on is a new pair of socks. I know I should have finished my other socks first because I set up this rule for myself of one pattern sock and one normal vanilla easy to go sock and then I just started a new sock but it's fine we're good I wanted to knit this so it's fine so I started these are everlasting socks these are also by Huga Canyon Knits I am knitting these out of Lena Grossa Mielenwelt 110 tweed color and it is in the color gray very adequate so I started these socks I love the twisted rib all the way on the back so I have knit the whole leg and the heel the heel turn and then this morning I actually finished the gusset decreases and you may be thinking that's only one sock that's not that much for three weeks since we've seen you haha <laughs> 
I'm knitting these concurrently. So this is the second one and it is at the same point. I have finished the gusset decreases on both of my socks. I like knitting my socks this way, especially when they're patterned. So what I'll do is I knit the cuff on this one and then immediately knit the cuff on this one. And then I knit the leg on this one and then immediately knit the leg on this one. And then I did the heel flap, heel turn on this one, heel flap, heel turn, and then gusset decreases, gusset decreases. It just feels really nice. And then when you go, you don't have the same like, oh, when did I, how many leg repeats did I do? When did I stop? I have it right there. I can just do it and I'm good to go. I don't have to like think about it after I finish a whole sock. Like how many rows of the cuff did I do? How long was the leg? Just doing them right back and forth. Again, I'm knitting these on my Addy Sock and Wonders. They are two millimeter needles, which is a US size zero. I love these needles. I did switch to Magic Loop for the heel flap and heel turn. And then once I was back in the round for the gusset decreases, I switched back to these. So I am highly enjoying this pattern. It is so much fun. I love the twisted rib on the back. I do not like knitting twisted rib because you have to knit in the back loop and then purl, but I do like how it looks. So I'm very excited about these. I am knitting the smallest size, so 56 stitches on my Addy Sock and Wonders, and I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping to finish these this week. Is that achievable? I think so. This has been the main thing I have been working on. I have not been doing a whole lot else. So I hope you guys like these. It's got a cable and lace pattern down the front. It's really nice, simple, easy to learn and see. I am cabling without a cable needle. It's only two stitches per cable, so it's really nice and it's quite, quite easy. I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that's those. The next thing I started working on is kind of exciting. I really like it. It is a log cabin blanket, which I normally don't knit a lot of blankets, but Nor George, Nor George Yarns Tracy has started doing a Harry Potter blanket club. And I'm not a huge Harry Potter super fan, but I do enjoy themed yarn and I like being like oh this is this person isn't it so cute and it's nice to have something that you can kind of show to other people and be like yeah so this was from this this is really nice it so if you look this is this color and this is this color and it's just a nice talking thing and I got this basket I'm so excited about this basket I've been trying to find something to store my knitting in when I'm in my living room and I just wanted something and I went to this local store. It's called Action. It's kind of like a Dollar General or basically it's a lot of home goods. It's a eclectic mix of home and electronics and tools and towels and random stuff that's not super expensive, but stuff that's nice. So I was able to find this basket and I love it so much. So living in it is my, it's kind of a hodgepodge mesh right now, is my Harry Potter blanket club that I started and I am knitting a log cabin blanket. So I finished one square. I have not weaved in all the ends, but here's my first square and I'm so excited. So the blanket club that I'm getting, I get a 20 gram minis and fingering weight and then a 100 gram skein of the uh, contrast color that she's keeping the same for every single month. So you can either marl it or for me, I'm going to knit that the border, uh, the border on all my squares in that color. So this is the contrast color. <laughs> my yarn ball winder decided to like explode when I was winding this up, but it's this nice gray with purple undertones and little dark gray speckles. This is called the gray lady. Oh, don't look at how sad that is. It's so sad. But 
So I am going to do the border in all of this to connect my squares. So this was square one, and this is the June blanket club. I've gotten June, July, and August, but I did sit a while because I was trying to figure out which blanket I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to do a marled or if I wanted to do a different one. I really don't didn't want to do the granny stripe or I thought about maybe doing granny squares but I wanted something that would be nice and warm and I didn't want holes and granny squares have a lot of holes so I'm knitting this not held double just single so it'll be light but it'll still be nice so the colors this month I can show you so this one the center is McGonagall this one is Sprout, and then we have this dark green with pops of lighter green and some gray. That one is Snape. This purple with some blues. This one is Trelawney. And then this final square with reds, rust, some orange. This, I love this color. This one was Haggard. So I have knit the first square. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two squares from each month. And then at the end, I'm going to do the borders in the gray. The thing that I don't know what I want to do is for the external border pieces. So what you do for this pattern is you start, you knit your square, you pick up, and then you knit this way, you bind off, and then you pick up and you knit this way so then you do the same thing for the border but then for your external borders you're supposed to knit the same height as this and then for the internals you do half so that way like the internal widths look the same as the external widths um, so I was trying to decide if I wanted to do a whole border at half of what these are so I'm doing 15 rounds of garter so I would just do seven or eight if I want to do eight all the way around, and then if this ended up being the corner, doing another two, but I don't know if that would look weird. I don't know. So I'm trying to decide. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never knit this before. But I finished square one, and I did start square two. My basket is a mess. As much as I'm excited about it, it does look kind of crazy. I started square two. And I started the center one. What's really nice about this pattern is it's all garter stitch, so I don't have to think about it. And that's kind of what I've needed. Something where I don't have to think. This is very nice after work, coming home, and I can just go and not. The only decision I have to make is what color to pick up next. And by that, I'm just going to reach in and grab the next one. I really enjoyed this. I'm knitting these on three millimeter needles. These are some bamboo circulars by Millard, Millward. I got it from my local yarn shop. It's just this Millward circular knitting needle. And yeah, I really enjoy these. It's quite fun. It's very fun and it's very nice to just go and see how the color works up and then the nice segments of each square you just do it and then you just want to keep going to get to the next part so i really enjoy it um i am knitting 30 stitches for my main square so in the pattern you do a square and then it'll do 30 stitches and then 30 garter row bumps and then while bind off, it'll pick up 15. So you'd pick up half of what it is. I thought that come came out to a nice size. Not too small, not too big. I don't know how big it'll be after blocking. I also don't know if I'm going to block before seaming. We'll see. I'm trying to save. I think I'm going to save some of the ends. I weaved in some when I didn't want to do anything. Um, but I might just save some of the ends for when I go to Sip and Stitch, which is my local knit group. Because then I don't have to think about that either. And sometimes weaving in ends with a group of people and good conversation is more fun than weaving in ends alone. 
So yeah, that is my Harry Potter Blanket Club, my log cabin blanket. I've loved this club. The July one, I'm super excited to start because they're very orange and they all look very nice together. The July one is all about Harry. And August was... Well, I can't remember what August was. But September is open. I think it closes on the 15th, but she is doing subscriptions and you can sign up and do it every single month. You can either do a one month or you can do every month. Um, if you subscribe, you save a little bit of money. Um, but she has options to do just minis. You can do DK minis or fingering minis. You can do 10 grams or 20 grams. And you can do with or without the 100 gram contrast gain. Like if so, absolutely recommend Nora George Harry Potter Blanket Club. My final work in progress is something I went back and picked up. One of my languishing rip whips. It is my Union Station cardigan by Patrice Staline. And I did not knit all of this in the past three weeks, so do not think I am a crazy fast knitter. So I finally went and finished the body. So this cardigan actually has kind of a funny story. It's not funny. It's not funny at all. Um, in the pattern, it says to do a specific number of the chevron repeats. I did that number and started the little seed stitch border, bound off half of the tubular bind off, and then asked Shane, do you think this is too short? And he's like, no, I don't think so. And then I tried it on in front of a mirror and went, no, too short. It's too short for what I would want it for. It was probably at the top of my hip, maybe, yeah, maybe the bottom of my hip, but I wanted something that would at least come to like mid butt. Um, so I had to rip out rows of seed stitch. First I had to rip out my tubular bind off and then rip out the seed stitch. And I had to go back and put a lifeline in and it was through the lace pattern and I, mm, mm -mm. it was not fun. It took a lot of work. And then by the time I finished ripping it back, I went, and I don't want to work on this anymore. So I'd been sitting for a while. I started this in March or April, I think, and I just now picked it back up. But I was only three rows from finishing the last chevron repeat and then doing the border. So I did the last three rows. I did my seed stitch border and I did my tubular bind off. And now I think it's good. It is, it should block out to my mid butt and I'm pretty excited. So I am knitting this out of Audine Wool's Shine Sport in the colorway Sprout. This is a Knit Crate yarn. So Knit Crate is a yarn subscription box. They send different yarn every single month and they have exclusive yarn. So, and then once they're sold out, they're sold out. I do think this one is still available. But I do enjoy that box. I'll link that on my blog and in the description box below. They've had kind of, in the past couple months, it's felt like a lot of their yarn are the same colors or the same makeups. So I've skipped a couple months, which is what's really nice about the subscription boxes. If you're not feeling it, they do a preview every month and then you can skip. And so they have a normal membership and they have a sock crate membership. And this was one of their normal memberships and it was from February. So I'm knitting that from those. And then I have started the sleeve. And I am using my Chow Goo Twist Shorties for the sleeve. And I am knitting these on four millimeter needles, which is what the pattern calls for. This pattern is pretty decent in regards to sizing. The smallest is a 32 and a quarter inch um, bust up to a 48 and a half inch. This was published in Interweave Knits Spring 2015 catalog. And then in 2016, they did, they added two additional sizes to make it more size inclusive. But it's a really fun and easy knit. The chevron pattern is really easy. It's only yarn overs, knit two togethers, and slip slip knits. So it's very easy. It's fun. 
and yeah I'm actually looking at it on camera I'm pretty excited I was worried that I wouldn't wear a white cardigan but even compared to my white shirt it's kind of a cream so I'm kind of I think it'll be nice for fall it's lightweight it's drapey it'll be good to throw on with like a simple t-shirt and my jeans and then still look put together and polished and I'm, I'm pretty excited those sleeves are only going to be three quarter lengths so it should go pretty quickly it's just a matter of me actually working on them the nice thing about this pattern though is I'm only on my third skein of yarn which is crazy because I don't knit the smallest size I'm knitting the largest size from the spring 2015 pattern which was the is the 44 inch size so it's not small it is one of the bigger sizes even in the updated it is the third from the biggest size and I'm only on my third skein and when I say like only on my third skein like I've just started it I've got a lot left and then I have a fourth one in here so I think this pattern is a great for if you have only a little bit of yarn you can maybe bust some of the stash out plus if you wanted to knit the length that the pattern actually called for yeah I think you could knit it with a limited amount of yarn for sure which is really nice because sometimes knitting sweaters and cardigans it's hard to find patterns that don't break the bank and I did look at the notes this morning. They said that it's sport weight, knit at a very loose gauge. So you can even hit gauge with either a DK or a light worsted. So I think it's pretty versatile as a pattern. And it's really nice. And I think it'll be something I wear a lot. It's just a matter of me finishing it. And I really hope that this like keeps folding. I hope that when I block it, it will stop. But I love seed stitch. Isn't it so cute? Yeah. Okay. So that is my last work in progress. Only three. I know you might be thinking, what about the other things? My everlasting socks I have not touched. And my library socks I've only done a few rounds on. So I'll show you those once they're done. Finally, I do have a few things that I am eagerly awaiting to start. I did swatch for a couple of things. So last week you may have remember, or last episode you may remember, I mentioned I wanted to start the Still Water Cardigan by Mary Green out of my leftovers of Cascade 220 from Shane's sweater because I overbought yarn. So I did a swatch. Oh boy. The white is, so I actually think I'm going to modify the Mary Green pattern to do a steak. Because I was looking at the project pages on Ravelry and someone steaked it. And it, I think it looks pretty easy. I commented asking, like, what did you do to do this steak? And she just added three to five extra stitches from the very beginning. And you're good to go. Because I don't want to knit another cardigan with purling. I would rather just knit in the round. And let's get this sweater done and I love this yarn and I'm very excited to start so I knit my swatch magic loop and then did the steak it's so easy so basically you do a oh boy can I remember you do a purl knit purl and then you go in with a crochet hook add this little line in because that'll be what you keep um, that kind of becomes your guideline for where you cut and then you just do it on both sides cut it right up and you're good to go I'll link the video that I used for practicing the steak it was knitting expat knitting expat she did a let's steak together video and I watched her video and that's what I used to do this and it was so fun and exciting to do and I was telling Courtney about it and she was saying when I uh, actually get to the steak on the cardigan I should record it and cut it so what do you guys think would you want me do you want to see me cut my cardigan it was so much fun I highly recommend it even if it's just this little swatch it was so fun plus 
swatching in the round instead of, you know, if you knit and then you slide it and then you knit and then you slide it and you have so much extra on the back. If you practice knitting in the round with your steek, you can then actually knit in the round with magic loop or whatever you want to do and then cut it and actually measure your swatch which is quite fun. I love that this one is nice and clean on the back. I don't feel like I wasted any yarn. You can't obviously unravel it if you wanted to save yarn later, but I love it. I'm gonna hang it on my cork board. I just, I don't know, swatches are fun. They're not fun to do. I wish I could just start a sweater, but I'm, I'm so anal. And I am so scared that it won't fit. So this one, I actually normally don't hit gauge with recommended needle and yarn. This one I did 100%. So excited. I had to kind of stretch to hit the row gauge, which is fine. I think it'll be fine. I'm super stoked. I didn't go down any of the size. So I just need to start that. I need to start it. I need to start it. But I want to finish my sweater. I feel like starting projects is hard because they take focus and if you can't tell focus for me is in short supply well finally the next thing that I did was I need another swatch because I went to a local yarn shop with Courtney and I found this yarn it is a cotton and wool blend it says color 98 so it is 73 percent cotton 19 percent wool and eight percent viscose and i've been wanting to knit a wool cotton blend sweater after watching the grocery girls and they had one on there so i bought this and it was very i think good price it was 450 euro for a 50 gram skein so I bought enough to do a sweater so I bought two colors and I wanted to do a striped sweater so I am planning to knit the Aviro by Orlaine Suka which is a knitwear designer in France I would never have found this pattern if I hadn't bought this yarn and then I was trying to search for something and I think it looks perfect because it's like a marled sweater with small stripes and it's a v-neck and it's cropped and it's perfect and I'm so excited so I knit a swatch I knit with the recommended saw that I wasn't gonna hit it so then I knit with a size smaller I'm still not hitting gauge I think I'm getting 17 stitches in four inches instead of 19 which is what they recommend so i'm just going to do math to figure out what size i should knit i'll probably knit a size down but i am very excited so this one you can tell i swatched in the round and then had to cut the stitches on the back but i really like how this is knitting up so i'm probably going to knit the smaller size needle question is what size did I use I don't know I don't remember is one size down from the recommended pattern size and yes so this pattern I think it's pretty size inclusive it goes from a 37 to a 51 and a quarter inch bust and it has five inches of ease built in so not the best doesn't go up to 60 but it's still pretty nice basically I think if I'm not knitting the largest size then it's pretty size inclusive it may not be the best i know i think 60 is like the standard for size inclusivity but when i knit like the largest size or the extra largest size it's i can't i'm like i'm not extra large so i imagine it's very frustrating for other people so i do appreciate that i'll probably be knitting the medium or the large in this pattern and there's still some room for people who are larger than i am I'm so excited. I love how this looks on camera too. I think it'll look really nice. I think 
in the fall it'll be such a nice because it's cotton and lightweight but wool so it's still warm and yes i'm super excited so that is all that i have for you guys this week sorry i hit the table that is all that i have for you guys this week i think what i want to start doing is on the end of the month that's when i'm going to do my stash i kind of want to do a stash that i used and then stash that i gained and then we'll do a positive or negative how much stash i ended the month with it's probably always going to be a positive this month i've only finished shane's sweater which is a negative five skeins and i have bought a ton of yarn it doesn't help that these are 50 gram skeins so i had to buy a lot of them to get enough for a sweater so but it's only because it's half it's a, you know like it essentially doubles it normally if i would buy 500 grams for a sweater that's five skeins but for 500 grams that's 10 skeins but when i finish it it'll look like i used a lot of yarn that month so let me know what you guys think about that would you rather see stash every episode or would you rather have a separate episode for stash i don't know i think it might be kind of fun to do a how much stash you got in and out in a month so that's probably what i want to do but I'll also keep these episodes nice and not too long. That is all that I have for you guys this week. I am glad you spent a little bit of time with me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope your knitting is keeping you happy. And just remember to live the life that you want. And in doing so, your knitting can just serve as a memory of everything that you've done and where you've been. And I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Bye.